Welcome to the 2007 North American International Auto Show. I'm your host, Steve Hammes. Now, these doors to the Kobo Center don't open to the public for another six days. But hey, lucky enough, you're with me. So let's go inside and check out what's in store for press preview day number one. Following protocol, Sunday opened with some prestigious awards. The winner of the 2007 North American Truck of the Year is the Chevy Silverado. Somewhere, John Cougar Mellencamp is smiling. No doubt the judges have seen those Silverado commercials a million times. This was a no-brainer. After all, the other two entries from Ford Motor Company weren't even real trucks. The winner of the 2007 North American Car of the Year is the Saturn Aura. The Fit and Camry are both excellent automobiles, but I like this choice because the Aura is an eye-opening vehicle from a GM brand that's on a roll. I didn't get a vote, but if I had one, these two vehicles would have received my support as well. Next up was a throwdown with Bobby Flay. Well, not exactly, but he was cooking up the recipe for success for the Chrysler brand. These new 2008 minivans, the Dodge Caravan and Chrysler Town & Country, innovate in a number of ways, most notably with their swiveling second row seats. With swivel and go, second and third row passengers can face each other to have a conversation, play games, or have a meal on the go. 2006 was a difficult year for us. To change that, Ford unleashed this new 2008 500 sedan. More powerful and designed with the brash Chrysler 300 in mind, this looks like the car it should have been in the first place. From reality to fiction is this Ford Interceptor concept with mean-looking big car swagger and this Ford Airstream plug-in hybrid hydrogen fuel cell crossover equipped with its own faux fireplace. And if you think the Focus is looking tired, you're right. Here's the new 2008 version, now also available for the first time as a coupe. And lastly, here's a scary thought. Bill Gates is about to program your next Ford. Known as the Microsoft Sync System, you'll be able to get this infotainment communication technology starting this fall on the Focus 500 and 10 other Ford models. Will this mean that our cars can get viruses too? And lastly, Lincoln rolled out a fascinating concept called the MKR. Being E85 flex fuel capable with a twin turbo V6, this could be the car to bring Lincoln some much needed help. It was back to big trucks over at Toyota where the Tundra lineup continues to grow with the Crew Max. This behemoth boldly declares to Chevy and Ford, we're here and we're not going away, we're just getting bigger and more powerful. This four-door version gets a 5.7 liter V8 with over 380 horsepower. According to GM, the Chevrolet Volt Concept Sedan, powered by the E-Flex system, GM's next-generation electric propulsion system, could nearly eliminate trips to the gas station. Volt uses a large battery and a small 1-liter turbocharged gasoline engine to produce enough electricity to go up to 640 miles and provide triple-digit fuel economy. Production is a possibility. Stay tuned. Remember the NSX? Acura let that sports car languish until it became ridiculously overpriced and underpowered. Finally, its replacement is here, but only in concept form, known as the Advanced Sports Car Concept. No longer fitted with a weenie V6, this American-designed car gets V10 power and all-wheel drive. Look out, Porsche. Clean diesel is on the mind of a number of manufacturers, including Audi, which unveiled the Bluetech versions of its Q7 SUV, one with a 3-liter engine and the other with a V12, which is capable of over 730 pound-feet of torque with a respectable 20 miles per gallon. These SUVs will go on sale in 2008 in all 50 states. Seal just wanted to know, where's his? What could be more fitting than showing off your new 4MATIC all-wheel drive system than on a sheet of ice? That's what Mercedes-Benz did. They finished with a concept car called the Ocean Drive, which is an S-Class four-door convertible. Depending on the public's reaction, this car might go into production, but it's likely that you'll have to make Emmett Smith money to ever afford one. Nissan's been living off the Murano crossover for a while now, but soon to join it will be the smaller 2008 Rogue. This front-drive four-cylinder sporty vehicle shares the new Sentra platform and will arrive this fall. The only 2007 model year reveal of the day came from BMW, which took the wraps off the new 3 Series convertible. Of course, the Passe soft top has been replaced with a retractable hard top. Two different six-cylinder power plants are offered. If you weren't thrilled with the new Subaru grille that debuted a couple of years ago, just wait a bit longer. Restyled for 2008 is the Legacy and Outback. Numerous other enhancements make their way into the cars as well, including a first for the Legacy in North America, one available with a six-cylinder engine. 
Quick, who sells the most cars over $200,000 in the U.S.? If you said Rolls-Royce, you'd be correct. And priced well over $300,000 is the new Phantom Drophead Coupe. It seats four, has suicide doors, and will compete with Bentley's new convertible. And last up was Ford's premier automotive group, which is about to lose Aston Martin. Still, there was the Freelander replacement, the Land Rover LR2, a gorgeous new concept soon to be produced small Volvo called the XC60, a look at the new Jaguar XKR convertible, and Jag concept called the CXF, which will bear fruit next year as the S-Type sedan replacement. If you think that day one was packed, just wait till you see all the important vehicle introductions lined up for day two. Join me then for Drive Time on Car TV. I'm Steve Hammons.